All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Liam Ward. I study mechanical engineering in the College of Engineering. And the title of my project is Thrust Vector Control of an Aerospike Rocket Nozzle via Aerodynamic Flow Manipulation. Before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge my senior design team members, Josh Bender, Jaden Ma, Forrest Daw, and the project advisor, Dr. William Hauser. So the motivation for this project is highly coupled with that of space exploration. In short, human activity can have a transformative impact on the way we live life on Earth, everything from monitoring the health of our planet to enabling global communications to, of course, exploring the universe around us. Currently, all those benefits are being restricted by access to space. Rockets are the way we get things to space, and traditionally rockets have been designed to suit political agendas or business models rather than pure engineering efficiency. So this is why there are solutions that can make launch up to 30% more efficient by maturing and developing them further. One solution is the aerospike, and today I'll be explaining what that is and what we're hoping to do with it. So quickly, the goal of this project is to improve aerospike rocket nozzles by researching, developing, and testing a novel method for their thrust vector control. Let's take a step back for a moment and look at how rockets work. So like your car engine, rockets burn fuel. Most rocket engines turn that fuel into a hot gas, which they push through an engine out the back of the rocket, which makes the rocket go forward or up. And that force that's produced is called thrust. So here's an example of a rocket engine. Obviously, there's a lot to look at here. This is the space shuttle main engine. What I want you to pay attention to is the bell-shaped portion to the right. This is the rocket engine nozzle, and this is what we're going to be focusing on. So a rocket engine nozzle is a device used to accelerate rocket exhaust to supersonic velocities. So you're taking high pressure, low velocity gases, you're exploiting some fluid dynamics, uh, and you are then accelerating them to low pressure, high velocity gases. Uh, here's an example of uh, that same engine we were taking a look at, hot firing. Notice you can see there the super hot supersonic exhaust plumes emanating from, from the nozzles. So what is an aerospike then? Well, an aerospike is essentially just a variation on a conventional bell nozzle. Uh, rather than having a metallic bell, which is doing the expansion of the nozzle, you're firing the exhaust onto a sort of a spike. And the atmosphere around the nozzle is serving as the, uh, serving as, as the expansion part. Uh, this means that aerospikes are known as altitude compensating. That means they require less fuel, uh, which results in higher efficiency. You're probably familiar with the fact that as we go up in altitude, the air pressure goes down, becomes less dense. This means that uh, in the bell nozzle case that you lose a lot of uh, performance. But with the aerospike, due to this altitude compensating uh, nature of it, uh, you, you don't have those losses. So here's a quick image of an aerospike firing. This is from the 1960s. Uh, but you can kind of see a similar idea, but uh, obviously there's some differences there. So I've just told you that aerospikes are this fancy type of rocket engine nozzle that can result in a lot of efficiency gains. So you'd probably be pretty shocked to find out that aerospikes are almost, and indeed have never, been used to get anything into space. And that's due to two main issues. Number one, their form factor of the nozzle presents obstacles for controllability. And two, their geometry makes cooling a challenge. So the focus of our project is that second issue, the controllability aspect. So how are rockets controlled? Well, the conventional method is something called mechanical gimbling, where you're actually pivoting the entire engine to change thrust direction and steer the rocket. Uh, as you can imagine, this is heavy and complex, moving a big piece of machinery around in flight. So the proposed method we have is secondary fluid injection, or SFI. So this is where we're injecting a secondary fluid flow into the exhaust to manipulate the thrust aerodynamically, which is going to reduce our weight and complexity of the system. So the objectives of our project are sort of twofold. One, we want to design and validate a basic aerospike. And two, we wanted to determine if secondary fluid injection can be used to control the aerospike. So we have three project elements. Uh, we have the nozzle and thruster assembly design. We have the test stand design and build. And we have the creation of a computer model. So I'll get into those now. So on the thruster side, uh, we have a device made up of four different components. We have the retainer ring, the shroud, the spike, and the base. Two key design features that I want you to take away from this are that 3D printing the shroud and spike allowed us to rapidly iterate on our designs to arrive at an optimized design as quickly as possible. 
And then uh, making the retainer ring and base out of aluminum allowed us to do high pressure testing, which uh, is important to getting the performance we need. Now that you've seen the spike, I want to move back to the SFI here. Uh, so without SFI, you can see, this is from the computer simulations, uh, you can see that the, the exhaust continues down the spike and straight out uh, without any uh, movement or turning. With the SFI case on the right, you can see we're introducing the secondary flow, which is causing a disturbance in the main flow, and that's having downstream effects in the form of vectoring the thrust. And that's something we can control by varying the input on that secondary flow. Uh, so next we have the test stand. This is meant to provide high pressure nitrogen gas flow through the nozzle for testing. It also needs to record the force produced by the engine or by the thruster. And we built this using reused parts to keep project costs down. And there's a, a CAD uh, rendering of, of that. And finally, we have the computer modeling. Now this, this can get in the technical weeds, uh, but what I want you to take away from this is that uh, really all we're doing is simulating the nozzle performance virtually before we test, which we can do a lot, more, uh, a lot more quickly than actually building and testing. And then we can compare these results with the physical model or the physical testing results to, to provide confidence in, in what we saw. So what did we test then? Well, in the fall, we spent the majority of the semester testing just the basic error spike without the secondary fluid injection. We varied thruster and test stand design until the desired performance was achieved. Uh, in the spring, we focused then on the, the thrust vector control the, using the secondary fluid injection, where we tested three variations of injection angle to determine uh, which provided the most control authority over the thrust vector. Here's a quick video of, of kind of what that looks like. Uh, so you'll see here, when we uh, open the valve, you can see the exhaust coming out. Now we've added water here for visual uh, purposes, but normally that's not there. Um, so that's to give you a sense of what this kind of looks like. It's testing. So uh, what did we find? Well, we were able to successfully design, manufacture, and test an aerospike rocket nozzle, which performed as we expected it to, to produce the amount of thrust that we wanted it to. Uh, we also designed a functional test stand, and we built the computer model. On the secondary fluid injection side, we were able to develop a computer model for that, and we tested those configurations. And importantly, SFI was shown to produce significant lateral thrust, which leads us to the conclusion that secondary fluid injection does show potential as a novel thrust vector control method for aerospikes. Uh, we were also able to empirically characterize the injection angle, the, the relationship between the injection angle and the lateral thrust. And sort of unexpectedly, we found that our platform, 3D printing nozzles, test stand, and computer modeling, represents an affordable way to test novel rocket uh, technologies and rapidly iterate on those designs, especially at the, at the college level. Uh, so thank you, and I'm happy to take questions. Um, my question is related to how your how the aerospike engine work um, when it was put into a manufacturable product. Would you recommend that it's printed out of metal? Would the manufacturing project, uh, process vary? So do you mean in the testing scenario or in the actual? This was moving forward yeah. into getting implemented into an actual rocket. Yeah, so we were printing out of plastic, which obviously that's not going to work. Normally with these engines you saw in the original image, the fire, very hot uh, exhaust coming out, these would melt instantly with that. So we were just testing it by flowing uh, cold nitrogen gas through to make it easier. Uh, if you were going to apply this in an actual scenario with, a, with a, a combustion chamber, you would probably want, you could maybe think about um, 3D printing um, out of metal if, if you could achieve a surface finish that you wanted. But you might also try to machine it, uh, but definitely out of a, a high temperature resistant uh, alloy of some kind. Liam, are there certain applications that this design might be best suited for? Or if you were like aiming for one, um, one type of rocket, rocket application to kind of aim for first with this technology, what, what would you do? Yeah, so aerospikes, uh, they're kind of this, uh, this, this, this dream for, for, for launch from the ground to orbit. Uh, and as you can see, there's also this heating question, which we didn't address, which uh, you need to address to, to get this into actually launching something uh, into space from the ground. Uh, another application of this might be on small uh, lunar landers or, or something that's going to land on another uh, celestial body 
because you really want to uh, bring it down your complexity in those situations uh, and, and carry as little weight as you want. Weight is everything in, in aerospace engineering. So uh, you, might, you might find an application for it in something like that, some sort of lander uh, to explore another Mars, the moon, beyond. So. Can I ask a quick question that might be beyond the parameters of what you're doing, but it is about the cooling aspect of this. Yeah. So I know you didn't address that specifically, but could you speculate a little bit on now that you have this aspect of it seemingly quite well resolved, at least hypothetically, what do you do about the cooling? Yeah, so you can imagine uh, when we look at something like this image, the problem, the cooling problem exists because you have the, the hot flow completely surrounding. So this is a cross section, but as you can see, this is the actual thing is, is a revolve of that. So you have the heating, the, the hot gas is surrounding the spike, which means the spike wants to melt because it can't cool. It's completely surrounded by heat. But the secondary fluid injection, now we're sending a, another fluid that could potentially be serve a dual purpose as a cooling fluid through the spike. Um, so if this was to be developed further, you might look at trying to find a dual use for the secondary fluid as, as, a, as a cooling fluid. So that's a possibility. Thank you. Thank you.